Well, thank you, Alan, and uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, before I uh, before I start in on just a little bit uh, about the matchmaking, um, I wanted to just mention the folks that we're going to have on our two panels, um, and one of them, uh, one of the panels, the first one is really going to talk about uh, not just matchmaking. They're going to talk about how to connect, how they connect, and Although the, they're, they're, for all of you, you'll all resonate with you know, how they do it, they all do it differently. They all found um, different avenues that work better, so they focused more on one than the other. Um, we have Harold Hess is going to be one of those. We've got uh, Fernando de la Pena. He's out of uh, uh, Houston here. And then we have Ross and I didn't write his last name down. Ross Draney. Ross Draney, uh, right here, okay. And uh, each one of them um, was actually kind of excited about talking about, yeah, there's certain things that I do that just work better. We're making it a fairly short panel, um, but um, we think it'll be interesting because they, they all do it a little bit differently. Uh, the interesting part is that they say after, over the last few years, as they became more successful, uh, they got a lot smarter in how they were doing it. So they're just gonna share a little bit about that. Um, as far as uh, matchmaking itself, um, and I'll talk a little bit about um, who chooses who and everything like that. But the uh, primes, we, we actually went from just primes last year um, to actually having agencies. Um, and they're going to, in their panel, uh, be talking about the major primes they have. And what we've asked them to do is to provide, uh, which you'll get in, you know, you'll be able to download it, um, the primes that they use and how you can actually get on their preferred provider list. And in almost every single case, it starts with downloading information to a website. And since everybody uses a different website, they all have their own website. They ask for kind of the same information, but not always. Um, but what was uh, more important was where are those websites? Because if you don't know where they are, um, unless you stumble into them, uh, you're never actually going to get on and have a, a shot at being one of their preferred providers. And typically what they do is you put the stuff into the website, they take a look at it, and if some of their buyers see it as something that they really need to have, then what they will typically do is call you and set up a time where they can, um, you know, get on a Zoom call, uh, usually it's Zoom, and or they'll set it up if it's some other way. And you actually get to talk to their engineers. And we've had a lot of the folks last year, and a lot of the, an awful lot of the folks that I worked with at, uh, in the Small Business Council at NASA uh, at, in Houston, um, that's how they got on the preferred provider list. So um, I just want to let you know, we've got NASA Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, he's one of the NASA small business specialists. Um, we've got uh, FEMA. It's going to be there, Department of Homeland Security. Uh, we've got Jennifer Erickson, EPA. We got Honeywell, Karen West. And we are struggling through, uh, uh, just as a side note, it's interesting, a lot of the um, primes and some of the, in fact, many of the agencies too, um, their security is so tight that um, you just can't, we can't just say, hey, everybody's going to Zoom. And, and so we're actually uh, struggling over the next week to make sure we have a way to do it. Um, it turns out at NASA, they will schedule them on Teams with you. Um, the uh, Karen West at uh, Honeywell, uh, she, she will set them up, but it's done a different way. And, and so we're, we're, finding, uh, we're finding that to be a little challenging, but we're working through that. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, Diane Sterling will be there with Northrop Grumman. 
And she's also going to talk about uh, the very large contract that they've got, uh, that they have. And they are going to be looking for a lot of subcontractors and just a lot of uh, areas um, uh, to do work, to do work for that contract. If I remember right, it's, uh, it's a 99-year contract. $79 billion. The first one was uh, somewhere around $10 billion. I know that's off by a little bit. Uh, and that's the first five-year uh, section of that. So she will be talking about that, talking about how to connect with them through the website, you know, as an initial thing, and kind of how all of that works, how they, uh, they go through it. More importantly, what needs to be on there? so that you're able to connect. And so that panel is primarily, where's the buttons you push to get to that website? And what's the information we're really looking for? And after the event, um, if there's folks that have questions and everything, um, you know, we're gonna be able to, we'll help answer those um, because it's going to be very difficult to get a hold of the uh, primes or even the agency folks. But uh, we would be happy to look at what you plan on uh, uh, putting in there. Because from what I understand, and I've always understood for probably the last 15 years, is you get one shot at it. Uh, they'll take a look at it. If it doesn't look like you're ready or um, it's not that interesting or they've got questions, um, too many questions, uh, they just basically bypass it. And we don't want that happening. So that's what I'm really primarily hoping comes out of that, um, that panel. And it's a one hour panel um, and we'll have questions at the end, but we're here to help afterwards because it really is critical to make sure you got your stuff in there. And so with that, um, you can go to the next next slide. Okay. Um, one thing I want to talk about quickly is who are you going to be talking to? If if you're if if in the matchmaking you select a small business, um, some of what we're gonna we're gonna talk about will be interesting. But if you're talking small business to small business. Um, you pretty much know what you need to provide. Um, and you're going to be talking to folks just like yourself. There'll be a, an owner slash engineer at the other end of it. So that's going to be the easy part. When you're talking to some of the primes um, or the agencies, um, in the case of the um, primes, you're talking to the small business liaison officer. Um, primarily, uh, they will always be on. They are the business person who, in many cases, they're over all the buyers. In some cases, they aren't over them, but they work in the same unit. And so they're business people. They're not going to be engineers. And so what we've asked for is if they can make sure that there's an engineer, even if it's a general engineer, not one specific to what you're doing, if, if what would be perfect is if it was the engineer who's working on the kind of work that you do, who would actually be very interested in it, we'll see how that goes. But at least if we get an engineer in there uh, or an engineering manager who's familiar with uh, the type of services that they uh, purchase, um, that that gives you your best shot. You'll get a lot of information from them. Um, you'll also get a lot of information from them um, as far as what are their, what certifications are they looking for? Um, how do they do their contracting? So there's an awful lot of that that will be in there. Um, another thing that actually the uh, Diane Sterling has a short short presentation on it, but it's very good. And um, she kind of likes to call it um, what never to miss when, um, when you're speaking with them or providing information. And she'll talk about um, 
exactly the do's and don'ts, the things that you'd never, ever want to do. Um, she'll talk about timing, how often you send in in case you think they've kind of missed you. Uh, she'll talk about, those are all really simple things, but she will tell you that um, if you miss on those or you send something in every week, nagging them, they will very quickly um, uh, set that to the side. Um, there's, a, there's a certain human aspect of it um, that you really have to uh, look for. She's gonna, she'll, she'll talk about that. Um, the, other, the other side of this is the agency folks. David Brock is uh, NASA, he's a, he's a small business specialist. And they, um, and I should point out, the primes get to choose small businesses. The small businesses don't get to choose the primes. This, the reason is very simple. If we allowed that, and I never allowed it even at NASA, um, if we allowed that, everybody would sign up with every single prime. It would overload it, and then they wouldn't volunteer uh, to participate in it next time. So we just don't do that. Uh, they will select the ones that they think they need now or possibly in the future. And that's where they, um, you know, that's, that's basically how they choose them is, uh, um, is based on that. Um, we did ask them to have the engineer there. So as I said before, it'd be great if it were your particular um, service that you have. Um, that would be great. Um, we will just see how well it goes. Um, with David Brock, what he's going to do is he will choose ones that he believes, um, and he's, he's very, uh, very well aware of the uh, 12 primes that are on his council. And what he does is he chose, I think he chose seven last year, and he met with them, but it wasn't for him. It wasn't him as a buyer. It was him um, requesting that you be able to pitch to, I think he's got 12 in his prime council now, uh, but you would actually do a Zoom pitch to his prime council, which means you get out to 12 different uh, large primes uh, that are part of the Marshall Space Flight Center city, if you will. Um, so when you're talking with, with them, uh, you're going to want to, there, there's some certain things that, that they're going to want to hear. Um, as far as the actual uh, capabilities, he'll have a general, he and whoever he has there uh, will have a general idea of what they're looking for. And so they'll be able to select from there. But there's also some other things that they're looking for. And um, I'm going to go over uh, uh, basically your, your uh, capability, uh, capability statement. And on there is enough information um, for him to make a pretty good judgment. And I believe he met with seven, and I, I think he selected them all because uh, they were all real good. And they all got a chance to pitch to the, the prime council. And um, some of the others... Um, really are gonna follow suit. If it's an agency person, um, if they find, uh, if they talk to a company and it looks like it's kind of gonna be a good fit, they are gonna pass that information on to their prime. Um, or in some cases, and I believe Jennifer Erickson at EPA, um, she had mentioned, hey, there's certain things that we have small contracts and so we're actually kind of looking for ourselves too. And it, it was words to that effect. Um, but the bottom line is there'll always be a business person there. And so you have to make sure you hit the business aspects that they're looking for. And with all of that, I'm not, I'm not going to keep going over all that stuff. Uh, I want to go over the capability statement. And this is something that when we first started doing virtual at NASA, um, or at least at Houston with the uh, large prime councils. Um, and, and I was rep to that. So I, I kind of kicked this thing off. Um, I would always meet with whoever was going to meet with them virtually. 
And I had to make sure that the buzzwords were in there, um, like fast turnaround and, um, and talk about cost. Um, it's okay to talk about cost and they are not as, uh, they'll all say they're interested in good cheap pricing. Uh, the bottom line is uh, they really don't care so much about that. What they care about is um, the capability and can you do it on time and give them an idea. You don't have to get, you don't have to talk about specific prices or anything. Um, but what you might want to do is talk about, hey, if you've got to have this thing, our normal turnaround is two weeks or normal turnaround for something is one month. It depends on what it is. Uh, and it can be, and, and, and all honesty, it can be six months. Um, CNC machines are six months. And that's absolutely okay with the idea that, hey, if, if it's a piece part that you need and, um, and we really need it in a week, um, can you do that? Well, yes, we can. Or no, we, there is no way to actually do that. Or yeah, we can do it. Circuit boards, uh, traditionally, they can turn them around in three days with the right, uh, you know, with the right documentation. But there's going to be, you know, we charge double or we charge triple or just, it's okay to talk about that, not dollars. You never talk about dollars, but um, talk about how do we do our pricing and what is our normal turnaround for typical uh, products. And if it's a, a, a service that's done, what are the typical turnarounds, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are the things they want to hear. And to be honest with you, whether it's a prime or an agency, they want to hear exactly the same spiel. Um, the one thing that we started doing, and I had Scott Gray uh, do this when I said his company, and I think actually Mar Marcia did the, the uh, actually did this uh, for them, uh, and that's his wife, and, and she was just really good at putting this together. She did it in like a day and a half or something like that, um, but this is what, especially the prime the prime, and I say primes, the large primes, um, uh, this is what they are really interested in looking at. And I'll, I'll go over um, what we kind of, all the, the elements of it. Rick, yeah, go ahead. You just really quickly in a sentence or so describe the word primes, because I've had some people say, I don't really understand what that is. Yeah, and, and you know, everybody uses it differently. NASA used it differently than when I came up and started doing things for Kansas. Um, if you have a contract with a, with another, well, if you have a contract, okay, with NASA or DOD, um, you, you actually are a prime contractor. It doesn't matter if you're a small business or you're a large business, you're still a prime contractor. And, and they float these words around and um, kind of loosely. Uh, Boeing, uh, if you have a contract with Boeing, <coughs> um, you can be a prime contractor or a subcontractor. Uh, reason being, if it's something doing IT for their, for, um, for their actual company, you're a prime contractor to Boeing. If you are, if, if Boeing has a contract with DOD and they want you to work for Boeing, you're now a subcontractor because Boeing has the contract, the, has the prime contract with DOD and you're underneath Boeing as a subcontractor. But if, if Boeing, um, if, if you went into, and I'll just say, do a picnic table, if they wanted to buy a picnic table and they wanted picnic tables all over the place and you, you did a contract with Boeing for picnic tables, well, you are now a prime contractor with Boeing. 
and that's how you just have to look at it. And if there's any other questions, please, you know, uh, please read on or, or, or ask me. Um, so anyway, I'd like to go over this thing real quick. And um, the way the, the large primes, um, and, and let me differentiate there too. If you're a prime contractor and you're a small business, um, you're, you treat, the contract is different than a large prime in that large primes, large businesses, um, they have small business goals. They all have small business goals. It's in the FAR and they have no choice but to, uh, they have no choice but to, to have small business goals. They have to be approved by SBA. And uh, when I was a small business specialist, I did the uh, negotiating on trying to find out what the small business goals should be. Um, but large primes care about small business goals. And at NASA, they're, they're all a little bit different, whether it's the state of Texas or it's a, a federal one. NASA had slightly different small business goals than say DOD did. Um, and so it, they're always a little bit different, but they have small business goals. And why do you care about that? Because there's certain categories that if they need to fill those goals, and some of them are fairly tough, if they need to fill those goals, then you want to make sure you let them know that you're that category. And at NASA, it was hub zone, woman owned, small business, small disadvantaged business. Um, it was um, uh, service disabled, um, uh, veteran owned small business, veteran owned small business uh, and women owned. I think I, I, think I hit them all, um, but they have small business categories. So when I spoke, over the couple of years about, you know, what should, you know, you as a large prime, what are you really looking for? And this is the way they put it to me. They said, we need to see a document. We'll look at it for about 15 seconds. And if we can see everything we're looking for, we're going to put it in the keep pile. If you don't send it to us, we'll ask a few questions, but um, we're probably miss on it we would prefer um, something like a capability statement. And what you see on the screen is that. And I'm just gonna briefly go over the different categories, but um, this is exactly what I asked every single small business that was meeting with the Prime Council. So anyway, um, I'll go through this fairly quickly. Um, obviously you've got the name, in this case it was Elevate Systems. Um, don't spend much um, territory on the business registrations or the cert certifications um, or the address and contact information. If they're interested in you, um, you know they can they can read the fine print. And if they're looking at certifications, uh, federal certifications, which in this case they were S, uh, they were eight A certified, a uh, woman owned small business. Um, and, you know, uh, woman owned small business, etc. cetera. Um, they're, they're literally going to go and look at it when they need to. And they don't care about your telephone number or anything. Don't make that big. One thing that really uh, interested me was they all said, we don't care who your team is, but when we're talking to people or we've talked to someone at an event or even a matchmaking, if you put pictures of the people, um, that helps us because we will remember the conversation we had with them. You know, in this case, say Scott Gray, they're gonna remember Scott Gray. Pictures actually are important. Uh, notable accomplishments, don't spend much time on that, but that's nice to see. They're not really gonna look for that at first, uh, they're really going to be looking for what's your past performance. We'll get to that in a minute. NACE codes, uh, what they will tell you is never have more than five or six. 
uh, no small business. They can do the, you know, in making something, there might be 15 NAS codes that fit, but you want to raise those up. And in this case, reverse engineering, uh, I believe that's the, the 330. Um, you want to have the top five. If they've got 15 or 20, and honest to God, I, I, I remember talking to a business that had just started four or five months ago or six months ago, and they had 52 maze codes. Well, what's going to happen is they will just put that in the, uh, the trash can. Uh, because they know there's no way in the world a small business can do that. So you want four to six. Um, having your certifications are always important. In this case, you know, you've got the woman owned. That's a real good one. Although women are doing pretty good at, at NASA. Um, they actually were taking an awful lot of the contracts, uh, which was good, uh, which was definitely good. And I saw that kind of trend as, it, as things progressed. But they want to see your, um, you know, what classifications you've got. Um, one thing they didn't do here that I would suggest, they've got the SBA woman-owned small business. Um, I would take a little bit of territory and I would put the icons in. If it's service disabled, veteran-owned small business, there's an icon for it. All Just put the icons at the top. In fact, um, I... I do a thing on how to do your uh, business cards too, uh, which I can share, um, uh, you know, in the future. And um, the biggest thing that I, I have on there is you want your NAS codes, you want your, um, uh, you know, what your classifications are, uh, you want to have your certifications, and you want to have in small print the name, you know, obviously the name of the company and uh, who you are. Uh, the most important thing that, that anybody ever did, I thought, was on the back of the card, they have the, was a CR code or QR code, I, I always forget. Um, have it on the back and have this, um, have this on there because they know if they get your card, if they forget exactly what you did, they can go to the, the QR code um, on the back and they can see what your, what your company is and get a lot more information. That's really important on cards. Um, other than that, company overview. Company overviews are really nice uh, as long as they're really short. Um, one thing that Scott did uh, was he put why we, why we exist, what we do, and the benefits. And honestly, the what we do is probably the thing that they, um, they'll focus in on first. Reverse engineering is the is really a significant part of what they do, and reverse engineering is a buzzword that if you're do if you need that type of thing, it's right there. So you want to have those those and he went past the five, but you want a short list of keywords that when uh, when the SBLO uh, takes a look at it, um, they know it's something they want to keep. And, and mind you, they're only going to look at this thing for about 15 to 20 seconds. Um, on the bottom, what they did, which was really quite clever, and there's a couple of different ways of doing it, is they put, um, and these are all parts that they've reverse engineered. And they put um, all the, you know, the, the, um, the different uh, well, and I'm trying to think of it was mostly helicopters, but anyway, the DOD um, uh, uh, flight things that uh, planes and that, uh, that they worked on. And then they had a picture of the actual element that they reverse engineered. And you didn't have to put any words in there. And the, the rule of thumb is if you're going to uh, put, uh, put past performance in there and recognize that they're going to scan it in just 20 seconds. Um, if they do work with Disney and they do work with DOD or they say the Navy uh, or they do work with NASA, all you want to do is go and put their icons in there. Don't plan on putting all that information in there. That's for a pitch. That's for a PowerPoint. 
So to introduce yourself to the business person for these large primes or the agencies too, but the large primes, um, this is the information you want. They can tell if they see a Disney and they see a DOD, uh, they know you're ready for prime time because they know you've, you know who you've worked with. Um, they're going to be looking at, you know, probably five different things and it's all in here and they can spot this in 20 seconds. And I can tell you, nobody will read the company overview in that 20 seconds. All they care about is what you do. Does it relate to them? Are, have you actually done it for some significant companies? And if you haven't done it for Department of Defense or, or uh, Disney or something like that, that's not a problem. Just put the icons or the names of the companies you've done work with. If it looks like they're interested, they're going to come back and that's the list they're going to go down and, and ask you what they did. So any questions? I, I, I don't want to keep going over stuff. Uh, is there anything else on there that, any questions you have? Because this is what you want to prepare um, if you're going to be talking to any of the primes. Um, but to be honest with you, I've talked to small businesses and they tell me the same thing. They said the capability statement uh, for the primes, we just, when we meet with small businesses, we show them exactly the same thing uh, because they're, you know, it's the easiest way to introduce ourselves. Oh. Rick Bijo has a question. Okay. Hey, Rick. Hi, Bijo. Uh, hi there. Uh, quick question for you. When you mentioned about putting, about putting the logos of companies you worked with, I was what I was wondering was, you know, that can sometimes run into an issue because companies may not want you to represent their logos without them giving you the right to do so. Yeah. so uh, just and then you don't put them in. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, right. So meaning that you will have to seek it out first, right? Right. Right. And so just just wanted to hear your thoughts thoughts around that. Well, my thoughts are really. Yeah, I've never seen CIA. I've never seen the CIA logo on there. Um, so, but you bring up a good point. Um, uh, it, there's some that you just have to ask for. And especially if they did classified work, um, they never want you to put it on there. So, but no, you're, you raise a good point. You should at least ask if you're going to put it on there. Yeah. whether it's going to be okay to do that. So one of the things that when we have sponsored research agreements and contracts, there's a clause in there that actually states that there is no, we don't to publicly state that we are working with so-and-so, we would have to get something in writing from them saying we can't. So that may apply to, yeah. to, to contracts. So just yeah. and, that and that's an excellent point. You know, I've never pointed that out. So, so thank you, Bishop. Sure. I guess I, I don't think I'll ever stop learning. So, well, I, I, I'll just add here a, a lot of the people on this call are probably less familiar with capability statements and more familiar, familiar with quad charts, is what we talk about when we're getting ready to pitch. And I would just say that. In, in general, like the Defense Department and other government places like that in the military, they the quad chart is kind of their standard go-to document. And Rick, what you're saying here is that the capability statement is more of in the commercial primes um, contracting realm. This is the go-to document right here that it's kind of the initial teaser to open the discussion, even as a quad chart is or a tech scout that's passing it on for DOD. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and when you get into the DOD realm and everything, um, it, it is a little bit different because you're talking to different folks. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, and, and, and even though uh, at NASA, we had, we had goals we were supposed to make. But the way we made them was through our contracts. Um, 
we did give out a lot of prime contracts to small businesses and it did add up, but 95 to 98 percent, well, probably 95% of uh, our making our goals when we made them uh, came from large prime contractors and they were the ones who were bringing in a hundred million dollars or 200 or 300 million dollars worth of small business work and i and i would point out that in those large prime contracts um you're looking at anywhere from 20 to 35 percent um probably 25% was probably a good average, um, had to be uh, made with small contractors. So small businesses had to be, to make their goals, and they made their goals because it meant money in their pocket. Um, they had no choice uh, but to work with small businesses because they, they had to do 25%. And a lot of these contracts were 100 to 500 to a billion dollars. Uh, the Boeing contract, although it's probably nothing compared to uh, DOD, uh, that was a billion dollar contract. And that was, I believe, the existing one is probably somewhere in the 22, 23% range. So you were talking about, you know, $250 million worth of uh, uh, small business work. We have another question. Yep. Um, when you say companies we've worked with, can that include strategic partners? Yeah, and, and you kind of have to look at what the rules are. Um, you're really talking about teaming, um, teaming together. And I, I'm not, I, I was never an expert um, on when you put a team together, they had a, another designation. And um, I, I will say uh, there were times where you had uh, two or three companies, or let's just say two companies, and one happened to be a hub zone, which is really, really hard to make your goals on. Um, and so you, you'd have a, they're a hub zone and the other one is just a small business. Um, they were able to make that work. Sometimes uh, they would make the small business be the prime or the hub zone be the prime um, on it. And the small business would be sub to them so that they could actually be going after uh, uh, one that was uh, um, hub zone. Um, and when you start putting them together, um, I was, I was not a CEO and you really need to talk to a contracting officer to get that. The best way to understand what those rules are is talk to the SBA. Um, PTAC can also do that for you. That's what they do. And uh, PTAC can give you all the rules and, and everything. SBA can do exactly the same thing. In fact, I think they make the rules. That help? And if, if anybody wants to kick the tires on that a little bit. I've, I've studied that out a little bit for my own company. And um, if you wanna, if you wanna delve into that a little more, we can talk. Yeah, I, I always tried to, I, I knew just enough to be dangerous uh, with what I did. And uh, so I would go straight to the uh, contracting officer and find out whatever the rules of that day were because they always seem to be just changing just a little bit. And even SBA uh, was routinely having telecons and they have one every month. And uh, on a regular basis, they were talking about that because it was difficult to understand. And they said, even the COs have to come to us because the rules are just fairly dicey. So I anything wanna... else? I, I, in some of the time we have remaining, I want to talk quickly. Vicki, could you pull up that bluff document? Because this feeds right into the discussion about that. Um, when, when you apply, you've had a title and then a bluff statement, uh, bottom line upfront statement. And we sent you this document. It, it, it looks a little funny, but we tried to figure out how to do this. 
Some people write, I, we've literally seen it, two page bluff statements. And that's impossible to put in a maths making matrix um, and be fair to everybody else that only used three lines. Um, but so we, we sent out this document and asked you to, without changing the font or the spacing, to just make it fit into this, into this region. But more than just making it fit to, to everything that Rick has just said, um, and this is why I'm emphasizing it, we are getting ready to put together this capability matrix. Um, we, are, we are making a cutoff for that on Sunday night, whatever we have, we'll send out later updated versions, but whatever we have in by Sunday night, we're gonna update it in our records. And then we're gonna put together the first capability matrix that's gonna be going out. And so if you really wanna get that in there right, and if, you, if you're really hoping that you can have a conversation with the prime, this is how you will get that conversation, is to have your bluff statement scratch where they itch. Um, so between now and Sunday night, if you, if you want to update that, go ahead and update that in your folder. And at, at this late point, I would say, put it in the updated version in the folder and then also send it to Vicki Long. I hope I'm okay, Vicki. Um, That's fine. And I'll put my email address in the chat box. Yeah. Because because we want to make sure and get everybody that's updated in there, but we've had some trouble with um, people not updating their stuff. Uh, I know we're all busy and, and everything, but I wanted to point that out because that your the way you're gonna the way you're gonna speak to the prime the the initial way you're gonna speak to the prime is through this what you put on this piece of paper right here this digital piece of paper right here, and then we'll include it in that and then they're going to read through that and out of that they're going to pick the teaser items that are, get their attention so it's very very important um, and these documents that we're referring to are all have all been included in your shared folder that if you've gotten you should have gotten an email from me if you're participating in encountering innovation matchmaking event and that folder has all of the documents that we'll be rep talking about today. Um, so if you Thank don't you. have that or are having issues, please get in touch with me and we'll work through them. And thank you, Anne Dupuy and AJ DeGaulle for allowing us to use their documents and Scott Gray. Yeah. Um, oh, a quick question, just in terms of prioritizing, I know everything has to be done, but for this first, what you hope to distribute, would it be the bluff and the capability statement to get them first and then followed by the others right away? Yeah. Initially, it's just going to be the bluff statement that they see in this matrix. Okay. The capability statement is something you want to have on hand. You got time on that. The bluff is, this document is really important to finish by this weekend. Um, then we're going to be, we're also going to be, I guess we're kind of running out of time here. We're going to run in, we have practice pitch sessions set up too for anybody that wants to sign up for them. Vicki, you want to talk about that? Yes. Um volunteer sign up and I'll put the link to that in here as well. If you're doing the tech transfer portion of the conference, the pitches with the tech scouts, um, we are offering practice pitch sessions starting next Wednesday. Um, there was a link to sign up in the email, but I'll put that link in the chat box as well. And, and if anybody is, if you're on here from Texas or Oklahoma, um, we're not, we're, we're, we're perfectly willing to try and work with you, but I know Bijo is, was working hard with the people from Texas already. So get in touch with him on that, um, on your practice pitches, um, and, and check with him. Cause I, I'm sure they're going to be doing that if they haven't started already. I don't know yet. Bijo, have you, what's your, what's your schedule on that? So it's it's a work in progress. So, but but yes, that's what that's what we are doing. We will have appointments set up, and you'll need to sign up for those. And our goal is that 
every candidate from Texas goes goes through that process. So uh, there's a lot of things to it. So uh, I don't want to say it's mandatory, but it's highly recommended and suggested that you do so. So thank you. Well, let's put it this way. There's no way that it can hurt you, but it may incredibly help you because you're speaking to a very specific audience and you need it. Just like Rick said, if you, if you walked in there and you're talking general business stuff and there's a technical person that you don't address sitting in the room, you missed a real opportunity. But in the case of the tech scouts, they're really focused all on the technical side, mostly all on the technical side. And if you wander off and give them all kinds of company details and building space and all that, they really could care less at that point because if your technology is not a fit, it doesn't matter if you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. So it's probably a little different than what normally you do. Um, Vicki, should we, let's move on. Real quick, other documents. I've talked a lot about quad chart stuff. I won't say much except just to say this, if you haven't gotten your quad chart done, don't worry about your pitch or anything else except this bluff statement, or even don't even worry about the capability statement. I would get this done first because when you can do the thinking for this, that will give you the basic outline of everything you need. And some of these things will be repeated on the capability statement as far as why, what you're trying to do, where you're going. Um, go to the next one, Vicki. Um, the info paper is very similar to the quad chart. It's just in written form. And the, at the top, you have a bluff statement. Um, th that should be in your, in your draft folders as well. Um, add pictures, you have a little space to add a few things in it. Um, in, in some ways, I think this is kind of a preference document. Some, some people, when they forward this stuff, some people would rather see it in a quad chart. I think a lot of the people in the government tend to want to see things in the quad chart, but some people would much rather see it in the information paper and they like that. So um, this is helpful. And this is also, this is also something that's short enough you could, you know, once you'd say if you were in a, if you were in a meeting with, um, with a, a, a large prime or another small business that you sign up to meet with and, um, and they, you, you've got, you've gotten through the teaser portion. Now they'd like to know a little bit more about your company. This is something you could send them. It's only three pages long and it will give them a broad summary of where you are and what you've accomplished it'd be a nice broad overview and, and people, non-government people tend to think more in terms of something like this rather than a quad chart. Um, and then just real quick, go to the bottom of that, Vicki. There's two signatures on here and a lot of times people shake their head and go, I, this seems dumb. They're different. It's like buying a house. One, one place or, you know, well, and, or like buy in a business. In one place you're signing as an individual, as you as a person, it's like a co-sign. And then the other, you're signing as an authorized person from the company, I'm authoring my, authorizing my company to do this. So it's two different roles. A lot of times it's the same person, but it isn't always the same person. So it just gives an assurance that when you pass this on, that the company has given permission to pass it on because I know that in some cases, tech scouts have had a few problems with that. So then next document. Oh, this, this is a presentation. Um, we send you a draft of a presentation. Um, you can just kind of scan through it as I'm talking if you want to, Vicki. Right. Um, it, it basically, the draft that we sent out, it, it basically just tracks what information that's in your quad chart. Um, and you do not have to follow this exact format. I would tend to follow that flow though um, through your documentation, but some people uh, through your presentation, some people have never done a presentation like this and we give you a draft as a place to start and to start thinking your thoughts and how to put them together on paper and not to wander and waste your time because you only have, you have a total of 20 minutes, we call it a 992, nine minutes to, to pitch 
and present your information in about nine minutes of collaboration and a couple minutes to wrap up and roll over to the next person on a hard stop. So we want you to maximize that time. I would say this, to me, this is important. Uh, and Ann, I'm glad you had this in here in, in your demo. I After the summary slide, I would put, if, if you anticipate what are the kinds of things people tend to ask about your technology or things, pictures, anything you think might be helpful for your presentation, but you really don't, for answering questions about your technology, but you don't really have time to do that in a nine minute presentation, put them in additional slides and format them as if you're gonna show them, but kind of keep them in your back pocket. So that when those questions come up and a text out says, hey, what about this? And you say, well, okay, that's a little deeper than I was gonna go, but um, here, let me point that out. And so you flip through, it looks very professional. You, you're very well prepared, but you're also respectful of their time if they don't go there. Uh, so that's very helpful. Um, go on to the next document. Poster board. Okay, let me, I got this screen up in front of me right now. Um, that poster board, we haven't really said much about that, but basically this is, it's basically quad information from your quad chart and information paper, mostly just stuck into one document that you can post as a poster uh, the only thing that's not in the other two documents is really a couple things like acknowledgments, um, a couple things maybe about the company, a little more detail if you want to put that in. Um, and this, this is going to be something you would use uh, during uh, networking times that you just put together. And literally, if you get, if you get your quad chart done and, and your information paper done, you can pretty much just cut and paste into this and it, don't be intimidated by it. It's already formatted. You can cut and paste most of your stuff in there, tweak it a little bit and be done with it. Um, and it, it'll look really nice. You can put a few graphics in there. So is with the event being virtual, this is the document that you can use and um, load into your booth um, that you'll have the opportunity to have um, as part of the event. Yeah. So that, I'd say this is really good. This is really good document to, to put together if you want to just kind of send the summary to somebody. It's a little bit like a, in a sense, a quad chart. It's like a one page standalone, except that uh, there's a lot more to read on it. Um, we used to have, you would actually print these out if you're doing it in person. It's, it's set up on a three by four page. So you can just send it to the printer and print it out on a poster board at three foot by four foot. Um, um, next, Vicki, oh, this is the last thing. Just want to point out, this is a point of contact document. Um, this information on here, um, when, when we generated this document, this is actually, um, or you guess you can't see my mouse. On the top right-hand side is actually just your bluff and you cut and paste that. So if somebody's reading it, um, it's your title and bluff. You just cut and paste it from other places. But um, this document is what the tech scouts use when, when they're trying to, if they're going to socialize you, if they're going to try and forward information to somebody, it's really good for them to know, hey, I've, you've already got a phase two SBIR with the Army and you're working with Fort Sill or whatever. Um, that gives them an idea of where you are and what you're doing. They might know somebody that can help you at that location, or they may they may realize there's no sense in treading water in the same the same water where they've already got good contacts. So let me help them in some other areas. I would say about this document, I know for those of you that remember um, Brett Sheringhausen, um, the late Brett Sheringhausen, Brett was very adamant on this document and putting all of your information in. Um, I would say, as a small business owner myself, put in what you're comfortable with. Um, and, you know, if it's somebody that you're working with on contracts, uh, technical points of contact, or somebody, you know, if you were working with Fort Sill um, and you have somebody you're working with, they're not going to be offended. You might ask them if you can put them on here. 
But if you're working under something that's kind of confidential or with a company that doesn't really want to show their cards, I mean, you, you don't want to put information like that on here. So be judicious about what you put on here. And some of you won't have a lot to put on here. And if, if, uh, if so, that's fine. You just, but still turn it in, please. Just say, you know, not at this time or we're still in pretty early stages. Just make a comment and send it back so that we know that you responded to it and you don't have a lot to put in it rather than that you ignored it and we have no idea what what's there. Bill, I have a question for you. In the yeah. past, I've seen, um, and this is in reference to the bluff statement, um, title and statement, in the past with all of with this these various documents i've seen that there's not always consistency in that bluff statement it may be read one thing in the poc document it's something completely different in the information paper in my mind those should be consistent in the same across all documents is that correct that would be my feeling as well. That they should be consistent, and I guess we haven't emphasized it enough. So um, I think that it's, it's just the same. It's the same basic audience, so it should be the same basic information. Yes, but then make sure that when you write it, that you really make it speak and. Don't just write it yourself. If you can get somebody else to read it and say, "Well, what about this? We do this," or you know. Make sure that it really speaks for you and, and is a good summary. And then you might be able to use that, that very similar statement on a capability statement, maybe a little bit shortened. Um, but it, by the time you sit down and figure out how to write it um, in your information paper and, and, and what you're working on in your bluff so that we can put it in a matchmaking, um, You've already thought through the, the most key elements that you really want to say about your technology. Your capability statement could be a little bit different because it's a little bit different audience. So you got to remember that. The audience for this part, all the stuff I've been talking about is tech transfer, it's, it's government technology scouts. The audience for the capability statement is going to be businesses. So they're going to want to know some, probably some about your business and then some also about your technology. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing that pay, that um, and the PowerPoint, uh, but I do want to let everyone know, and I'll share this um, as well. We on our website on the EncounteringInnovation.com website, we have links to training to training materials. Um, I'm going to share that as well real quick with you. Uh, yeah, and you, you can put it in the chat, you're thinking. Or pull it up. But and, just so that you all know, this is available. It's encounteringinnovation.com. And I'll put it in the chat as well. OK. Um, but you'll see. Click for training, tech transfer, training materials, and it's got videos, links, and then the supporting document examples. And then same thing for the matchmaking piece of it. Um, this website has information on registration and payment. So here's the event pricing information. Um, and here's where you'll click to, right here is where you'll go ahead and click to actually pay your registration. Um, just so that you know, if you register by May 29th, the rate is 159 for the entire week. If it's after the 29th of May, it's 199. So keep that in mind. Um, documents, the most, as Bill and um, Rick indicated, the most important right now is for us to get 
your bluff statement um, by Sunday evening. We'll be finalizing the capability matrix to be sent out um, Monday morning. And then we need all of your final documents by June 1st. And we're doing that so that we make sure we have everything ready to go and are prepared for um, when we start the event on June 6th. Yep. And I'm just looking here. Uh, if there's anybody that's on here, Vicki, that right off the top we recognize, we need to talk to uh, Michael Warren. If you could stay on for a little while too, um, that would be helpful. Yeah. Is there anybody else? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you very much. If there's any other questions, I know we kind of blasted through this, but it felt like Rick really needed the time to talk about capability statement. I'm guessing a lot of you haven't thought a lot about those kinds of things before, um, but it's, it's, it's learning the language of doing business at a different level than maybe you're used to. And, uh, but if that's where you want to be, which I think, at least with a number of you, that's where you want to be. Um, Rick is really good about helping you get there. So. And, and uh, thanks, Bill. The, uh, if any of you put one together or want to help putting them together or figuring out, you know, what your classifications are or anything like that, um, uh, you can certainly email me. And Vicki, can I'll you put, put your my email? email in the chat box? What's that? I'll put your email in the chat box. Okay, thank you, Vicki. And if you uh, can, but just send me an email. Um, uh, you know, if you've got it done and it looks good, you think uh, shoot it to me, and I'll I'll just take a quick peek at it. Um, uh, no problem at all. Be happy to help. 